dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. Well, this is like the third headquarters in the last three videos. So I've been hopping around a lot, obviously. And we are now in San Diego, downtown, the gas lamp district in a hotel room. You know, I had a lot of credit card points. I was in an Airbnb for like five days with a couple of my friends. They had to leave. So I'm like, I'm gonna get a hotel room before I have to head up to LA tomorrow. Let me get, you know, I got hella credit card points. Let me, let me, let me read them and fucking weep. Let me sweep them out, right? Let me get rid of them. So they're not take, they're not weighing me down anymore. So I'm like, let me get a baller ass hotel room. Got a nice little like studio suite or whatever. And the view is overlooking Petco Park, right? That baseball field and bike there. It's Petco Park, so the Padres play. And I'm like, that's gonna be sick. It's gonna be such a cool view. Can't wait to watch them play a ball game. It's February, there's no baseball going on right now. There hasn't been for months, and there won't be for months. It's just a, it's just a field, it's just a dirt field. When they don't like put the lights on, it's not exciting at all. I made a huge mistake. I made a huge mistake, overhyping it up, but I'd come bite to it, all right? And that's the theme of today's video. Five sophomore players that were buying in Dynasty despite Terrible rookie seasons. We're gonna call this the Petco Park episode, all right? They, for whatever reason, failed last year. Maybe injury, maybe efficiency, I don't know, maybe sleep deprivation, who the fuck knows? I don't suffer from sleep deprivation, because when I don't sleep, we just fucking rail out large nitro cold brews. So that's his video, okay? You know what the fucked up part about like, Dynasty players is? It's it, it's like when Prez was doing uh, Davey Day Trader, right? Every day, and he was like, stocks only go up, stocks only go up. It's like how Dynasty players are, man. It's like you draft a player, he does well, his value, his stock goes up. He does poorly, you still have to buy him for the same price that he was drafted. It's fucking bullshit, all right? So this might be a pointless video, but these are five guys that fell off last year and I'm willing to re-up. We're resubscribing to it. It's almost like you forgot to cancel your subscription and you want bike in, all right? You're too lazy to, you, to call the credit card company or call Netflix or call Amazon Prime and cancel the membership. You're like, ah, I might use that shit, all right? Maybe there's upside. Maybe they come out with a new feature. That's what these players are. Um, I'm filming you're on top of a garbage can, which is on top of a fake tree stump. I have a feeling this is gonna fall. The lens is like this big. You're definitely falling off, so I'm sorry if that happens. Uh, so I'm in San Diego right now. This is gonna be like a vlog slash fantasy football episode. This is gonna, our viewer retention is gonna be like, <laughs> fucking have zero subscribers after this damn. <laughs> Kept doing that. I love doing this now. Anywhere I go, I just fucking do this. Let people know what's up. We were at the San Diego Zoo yesterday. Fucking llama looked at me like, you hit, you hit him with the trap flex. Let him know. Fucking jacked his ass up. Serious, you walk by like 7-Eleven, you see yourself in the mirror, jack it up. It's huge to add to your repertoire. I'm not sure for what purpose. What the fuck was I saying? So yeah, I'm in San Diego right now. This is like for a vacation. I only came out here because I had to do stuff for work for the next week or so, all right? So I'm, in, I'm gonna be in LA tomorrow for the Super Bowl weekend. Underdog Fantasy, the great, great people that they are, have rented out like an Airbnb, some fucking wild ass villa, and I'm sure I'll vlog it so you guys will be able to see it eventually. Uh, rented out this villa for the content creators for Underdog. So it's like me, Animal, Jack Settlement, Peter, Overzet, uh, Josh Norris, Hayden Winks, and those guys. So we're gonna be staying there for the weekend. It's gonna be fun, it's like networking, creating content there, whatever, meeting people. So it should be a, a pretty wild time. So I had to come out for that. And speaking of Underdog, bro, they got a lineup right now, Joe Burrow. One passing yard. One passing yard for the Super Bowl. Over, under, one pa I'm not an intelligent dude, okay? I'm not a very intelligent guy, but I'm pretty sure Joe Burrow will pass for more than one yard, all right? So go hit that player prop on there ASAP Rocky, ASAP Fur, ASAP Jordy. I forget what the other ASAP members' names are. One, one passing yard, all right? And if you're new to Underdog Fantasy, and you use the promo code BDGE when you deposit on there, you're gonna double the money that you put down. And I believe the Joe Burrow prop, two things to notice. If you do the one yard passing player prop in your parlay, I believe the max you can bet is 25. You know, if you've been holding it for a big Super Bowl, this is your chance to do it. Joe Burrow over one passing yard. I also like the under, just to give you a couple other plays I like on the running backs in this game. I think Cam Akers and Joe Mixon, their total yards rushing plus passing is both. I think Akers is like 84 and Joe Mixon was like 94. I like the under on both for them motherfuckers, so pair it up, stack it up, get your bread up. Underdogfantasy.com, promo code BDGE. Underdog is putting us up in the villa, that'll be fun, and then immediately head to, we check out of that Airbnb Monday morning. I go to Vegas Monday evening, I gotta take a flight over there for the FSGA, Fantasy Sports 
Gaming Association. It's a conference that they do every winter in Vegas. A lot of people from the fantasy industry go. I've never actually been. Um, I had no inclination, interest in really going, to be honest with you. Uh, it's a lot of like presentations about the industry, whatever. I'm like, bitch, I run the industry. The fuck I need to know from you. Um, this is a, they invited me to come actually speak on a panel there. The content marketing panel. I'm like, I love fucking content. I love, I don't love fucking content. I love making content and I, I like to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, cool. You know, I'd love to get up on stage and, and yell about content and how it can help your business and how it's helped my business, you know? And how content is king and how you gotta film in fucking hotel rooms on garbage cans if you want content marketing to be the pillar of your success. Uh, so yeah, I'm speaking at the panel there, which is actually pretty fucking cool. So I'm grateful for these opportunities. I really, 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 really am. Uh, they're gonna be fun and I'm looking forward to the trip, but I gotta be honest, man, like, I miss New York. I. I miss New York, but it's, I'm not like that obnoxious. I can't, I can't wait to get home already. I can't wait to get back to work is really the point I'm getting at here. I feel like I'm the only dude, the only person on planet Earth that like, I don't like traveling really, you know? Like it's cool to experience these opportunities. I'm grateful for it. I don't get how like people are traveling. Like, like Jack Settleman, the dude, one of the dude that's gonna be staying with me in LA, like he's traveling all of the time. Like he was just in Vegas for Pro Bowl. He's coming to LA for the Super Bowl. The kid's everywhere for every sporting event. He's in fucking Boston, he's in Florida, he's in Cali, he's everywhere. I'm like, I can't do that. I don't like that. I don't like, I like being in my creative zone. I like being able to sit down and knock out a lot of work. I like being in a good, like solid routine. You know what I'm saying? So these will be fun opportunities, you know, and the networking will be great. I'll meet a lot of people and I get to, you know, take you guys behind the scenes, which is always fun because you get to know me a little bit better and and see what I'm passionate about but I gotta be honest man I, I was like in JFK I stepped in JFK and I was like I'm out Uber here Uber bike I shouldn't even step foot on this fucking plane that's what was going through my head so I'm excited for the rest of the trip but I'm, a, I'm more excited to get bike home and get to work for y'all to be honest with you I'm grateful I'm grateful that I have that drive realistically man because a lot of people would probably be in this opportunity and be like oh i can't wait for the, you know fucking la and vegas and etc and that's like their highlight but i'm 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 fucking excited to get back home and get bike to work speaking of getting to work it's about damn time we get to the actual cream and butter and cold brew of this content five sophomores i'm buying in dynasty despite terrible terrible rookie seasons y'all know what to do we gotta tuck our shirts in I'm gonna tell y'all to stop yelling because I don't know if I can because I don't know if the mic's even picking me up right now. So let's stop yelling. Let's eat. Also, shout out to the rest of the BDGE Dynasty content creators. Uh, if you've seen this week, you know, the boys are fucking bike. Mike, Noah, Noah, FB God, no more parties. All the boys are hitting. Like the starting five is flawless. And then you guys have to listen to me, which is really, I'm like, it's almost like if Michael Jordan stepped onto the court, like right now, I'm not comparing myself. I'm comparing myself to 55 year old Michael Jordan stepping onto the basketball court right now. Like they've got their starting lineup of dynamite players. And then I'm like the GM, so I'm like Jackie Moon over here, stepping onto the court, like forcing you to play with me. So I apologize for that y'all, but I do love you. And I love the other boys. And we're gonna be ripping off content every single day going forward. All right, first player on this list, we will start at the quarterback position, Zach Wilson of the New York Jets. And this is obviously referring to super flex leagues. If you're in a one quarterback league, you are not buying him under any circumstances, okay? He is like heroin in a crack alley. You're not buying this shit. Uh, Zach Wilson's rookie year, New York Jets, second overall pick, not a good year. Statistically, 55 and a half completion percentage. 20, a little over 2,300 passing yards, nine touchdowns to 11 interceptions. That is an, a god awful touchdown interception ratio, okay? He had a little bit on the ground though, 185 yards on the ground, four rushing scores, all right? So we're seeing the athleticism, the mobility that we saw at BYU translate into the NFL. And it's something I think we can count on going forward because he is an athletic player no matter how inaccurate of a passer he may be, all right? And when you look at Zach Wilson, here's the other thing, like the rest of the rookie quarterbacks last year, every all of them were hyped up, right? None of them really lived up to their expectations except for Mac Jones. So if you're talking about relatively speaking, and you could throw Trevor Lawrence on this list, I just don't think anyone who draft, I'm trying to be realistic here, anyone who drafted Trevor Lawrence is not giving him away for the cheap. Like if you drafted Trevor Lawrence, you drafted him one in a startup, probably at the end of the first, early second round, and I'm not giving him up for anything less than that. I'm letting his career play the fuck out if I own him. But relatively speaking, Zach Wilson was fine compared, or not fine, 
time, but like he wasn't terrible compared to the other rookie quarterbacks in this class. So I think we give him a little bit of time. The other thing that's very, 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 very clear to me and a huge positive sign as far as the team goes is like, it's like the opposite of what they do in, Aaron, in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. They are very clearly building around Zach Wilson, right? They have spent a lot of draft capital, a lot of money, building up the offensive line over the last couple of years. And yes, it didn't really pan out last year, but the continuity goes a long way when it comes to offensive lines in the NFL. They've added pieces and they will continue to get better as they continue to play together. But more importantly, the weapons that they continue to add, right? They signed Corey Davis, Elijah Moore busted out and should be a very big piece of this offense going forward. You know, they drafted uh, Michael Carter. They're doing a lot with this offense, you could tell, Similar to like Josh Allen after his rookie year, they went out and they started getting playmakers. They started getting pieces for him to improve, right? A lot of these quarterbacks, you know, if you're not the bottom of the spectrum or the very tippy top of the spectrum in terms of accurate quarterbacks, a lot of your success in fantasy is going to ride on whether or not you have the weapons and the pieces around you to make you a successful passer. And the Jets are clearly, you know, for better or worse, they're going to invest everything they have to make sure Zach Wilson works out in the NFL. So they keep adding pieces. The exciting part is that they have both the number four and the number 10 overall pick in this year's draft. Very good chance that, you know, the first one goes to like a defensive end or something like that. But they have the capital if they want to move back and then grab a guy, uh, a wide receiver at number 10 or something like that. Like there could be some big Drake London. Oh, I'd love to see Drake London in this offense with Zach Wilson here. So they have capital. They've got moves. They've got money to make to continue to build around Zach Wilson. And I obviously see that as a positive. None of us can really tell what any of these guys are going to be going forward, but I will keep taking dart shots on guys that their team is building around. And when you look at some of the metrics, you know, you go to playerprofiler.com. It's free to look at this stuff. You type in Zach Wilson, you see Zach Wilson, number nine overall in accuracy rating last year, which takes into account the distance of the pass that you threw. It takes into account, you know, just the accuracy that you had inside the numbers, outside the numbers, the down and distance and things like that. Number nine overall amongst quarterbacks, deep ball completion rate, number six overall amongst quarterbacks and dropped passes, 34 overall drop passes, which was the second highest number in the NFL despite missing a month of the season. So he did not get help from his teammates at all. We had Corey Davis banged up for a lot of the year. We had Elijah Moore who took half the year to, to break out. So I think there are a lot of positive signs we can look for when it comes to Zach Wilson moving forward. Second player up on this list is Mr. Ah, this one. I should, I... Fucking Trey Sermon, baby. What? What? Drop a comment. Say something about it. They need an emoji. They need a, they need this emoji. Someone screenshot this. I'm gonna use this on Twitter all fucking day. Someone comes at me, gift this. Someone, someone fucking. Trey Sermon, San Francisco 49ers. Here's the thing. I'm gonna be a fan of Trey Sermon as long as I am breathing. Kyle Shanahan seems to be in the opposite situation. He's only gonna give Trey Sermon an opportunity if no one else is breathing on that team, all right? And I, I was, listen, I was giving sermons on Trey Sermon last summer. He was a guy that I wanted to draft anywhere I could at a reasonable price. By the time a lot of my redraft leagues came around, he was like a fifth, sixth round pick and I was not on board with that. But I tried to get him in Dynasty everywhere I could. Loved him coming out of Ohio State. Instead, it was his backfield mate, Elijah Mitchell, who I also really, really, really liked. Made the individual video hyping him up last summer. Mitchell Mitchell took over and exploded and looked fantastic. He looked great. Here, here's kind of a comp I'm gonna make, all right? With Trey Sermon, I made this comp a lot last summer. I like these backs that are not necessarily fast. They don't have long 40 speed, but they're agile and they have a very high burst score as you'll see with Trey Sermon from his player profile. I like these guys who are decisive and elusive. They might look a little bit slow. They're not flashy, but they get the job done. Very similar to Damian Harris, okay? Damian Harris's rookie year. Let me remind you, Damian Harris's rookie year in 2019, he played in two games, carried the ball four times for 12 rushing yards with zero targets. That was Damian Harris's rookie year, okay? Trey Sermon's best comparable player is probably Damian Harris in terms of play style and how he runs and his athleticism profile, okay? And after a nauseating amount of hype last summer from the 49ers beat reporters, which is a lot of the reason why I liked him as Sermon being the RB2, that shit just didn't happen. His rookie season played in five games, 41 rushing attempts, 167 yards, one rushing touchdown, caught three passes for 26 yards. He got hurt. He didn't play much at the times he did, he looked sloppy, okay? But I wanted to look at how he performed individually outside of just the offensive line, etc. So what I did was looked at all the running backs from last year. I did a cutoff, an arbitrary, uh, an arbitrary cutoff at 40 carries. Any running back in the NFL with 40 or more carries, because he had 41, I had to have a, had a, have a cutoff somewhere. There were 83 NFL running backs last year with 40 or more carries. Among them, Sermon ranked 37th in juke rate, 25%, which is not great, uh, but it's in the top half, all right? Elijah Mitchell was 46th 
at 21.7%. Ju juke rate is like the rate in which you break tackles via elusiveness or missed force tackles on playerprofiler.com. So just overall elusiveness, okay? So Sermon was in the top half, higher than the top half, and he ranked better than Elijah Mitchell. In breakaway run rate, this is where you see a lot of these types of players, the Damian Harris's, the Kareem Hunt's, the Trey Sermon's stack up their, the Josh Jacobs stack up their, their numbers and their statistics because they don't break away long runs, but they're very decisive and they have good bursts at the line of scrimmage, as you can see by the athletic profile, which leads to a lot of 10 and 15 plus yards. They're not gonna break the 30, 35 plus yards, but they're often gonna run between eight and 17 yards. Sermon last year, overall number 11, 11th overall in breakaway run rate, 7.3%. So 7.3% of his runs went for 15 plus yards last year, okay? Number 11 amongst those 83 running backs. That is a skill that translated from college into the NFL. 59th in yards per touch, 2 0.3 or yards created per touch. So that's not good, but Mitchell was only at 2.4. So he was right in front of him. I'm not here to argue that Sermon is better than Mitchell because that is, that is not the case. But the numbers do say something that on an individual basis, outside of just pure volume and workload, Sermon was not that bad compared to Elijah Mitchell. And the thing is, we have no fucking idea how this 49ers backfield is going to play out. And if it rolls the right way, the upside for the starting running back, as we saw with Elijah Mitchell this year, who is going to be given every chance to be the starting running back next year, is really, 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 really high. And the other big piece of this puzzle is, as I said before, Kyle Shanahan don't want to put this dude on the field unless no one else in the backfield is breathing. Raheem Mostert. Jeff Wilson, Jamichael Hasty. What do all of them have in common besides cannot stay on the fucking field and are terrible running backs? They're gonna be free agents this summer. All three of them, Wilson, Mostert, Hasty, free agents this summer, which lends that second depth chart spot straight to Trey Sermon. Tomorrow's video, tomorrow's video, if I get around to filming it, maybe Saturdays, is going to be 10 players to target, either buy or sell in Dynasty, based on expiring contracts of their teammates. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel for that video coming out. But that's what I got on Trey Sermon, man. I still like the player, rookie year, scratch it off the books. Obviously that gives him a lot less chance of actually breaking out and it's ugly right now. But if you could swap like a, you know, a mid to late third for Trey Sermon right now, I would absolutely make that deal. Third up on this list, all right? And if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as I just mentioned and yelled at y'all. And make sure you go fill up your coffee because you're going to need it. Well, I'm talking about Terrace Marshall of the Carolina Panthers. Now, if there's anyone on this list that I'm hesitant to buy, it is probably Terrace Marshall of the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers situation, how does it change, right? He did not have a good rookie season whatsoever. Um, he didn't play much. They, they re-signed Robbie Anderson to a contract extension. He, he sucked anyways. The problem is DJ Moore's there and he's going to continue to operate as the alpha. C-Mac will be back for this year, hopefully. So the targets, who knows where the targets are really going to come from when it comes to Terrace Marshall. Here's what might happen this offseason. The, the quarterback situation is going to change there in Carolina. We don't know how it's going to go. Are they going to draft, you know, a Kenny Pickett? I think that could be interesting. He actually committed to Temple when Matt Rule was there before decommitting. So there's a little bit of a connection with Kenny Pickett, who I really like this year. There's obviously been rumors linking, you know, Deshaun Watson to Carolina, things like that. So there could be upside at the quarterback position when it comes to a guy like Terrace Marshall. Now, I had been hesitant with Terrace Marshall last summer. Everyone, like, he was one of those guys where it was, you know, you couldn't not like him. Everybody would get it. As soon as you said something negative about Terrace Marshall, fucking to Dynasty Twitter was a hive and attacked you for it. Now, I threw out this thread. I'm not going to read through it. Tony can put it up on the screen. And I always had hesitation on Marshall, and I still do. But going back to his college production, man, and it's very clear that it was the Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson show. But if you can perform in that offense like he did to that level with this type of athleticism while sharing the field with those other two, there is a very good chance that he's, he's going to be a good player, at least a role player in the NFL. NFL that has high upside that could be a red zone target, right? He's very, 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 very big. We saw him score a lot of touchdowns when he was at LSU. He's a guy that could be kind of a specialty player plus. Throw him in a slot, let him rack up a little bit of the reception total here. So with Terrace Marshall, I still have hope. It's dwindling very, very quickly, but but he's a player that I would, I'm not going to, you know, throw a second at him. I'd probably throw around what Trey Sermon I said to, to kind of throw at him, uh, maybe a mid to late third round pick and, and try to scoop up Terrace Marshall with the hopes that the new quarterback comes in and turns this offense around dramatically. Now, fourth player up on this list, Mr. Deami Brown of the Washington. This should be their logo. This should be the commander's logo. Just this fucking me, or it should be Terry McLaurin just doing this shit. Deami Brown, one of my favorite by lows of the 2022 offseason. Really disappointing rookie year. Played in nine games, 25 targets, 12 receptions, 165 receiving yards, zero receiving touchdowns. 
There are almost legitimately zero bright spots in this kid's rookie campaign. This is like one of those cases where I'm gonna need to argue why he was bad more so than cherry picking the good statistics. Almost like what I did with Terrace Marshall there. Here's what I'll say. If Terry McLaurin, who is an elite route runner and one of the best receivers in the NFL, had trouble producing in this offense, what are the other playmakers in this uh, offense gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's wild to say, but once Ryan Fitzpatrick went down in the preseason, early season, man, there was almost no hope for this passing game, okay? Again, if Terry McLaurin couldn't do it. There's no way a rookie wide receiver was going to do it like De'Ami Brown. Taylor Heineke sucks. That guy fucking stinks. He was like the, the Gardner Minshew story. If you took Gardner Minshew, put him on Madden, and then turn the accuracy dial down by like 25%. Uh, Taylor Heineke was god awful. The, the quarterback situation in Washington is gonna be another one that changes. I don't know what's gonna happen there. I don't know if they get Jimmy G. I don't know if they get Matt Ryan. I don't know if they draft a Kenny Pickett or something like that, or just any other rookie quarterback. Good chance that they switch up. Or if Ryan Fitzpatrick is back, man, I, I'd like that as well for De'Ami Brown. But I think there's only upside to go for De'Ami Brown, who was an overlooked deep ball player who can stretch the field opposite of Terry McLaurin. I think uh, De'Ami Brown is a playmaker down the field. I think his yards per reception number is gonna be pretty sexy. And it's, he had a similar, Semi-similar profile to like Terry McLaurin where he was underrated, wasn't used a lot in college at UNC. And you see the impact that the UNC college offense had this year with a guy like him leaving in the passing game, right? Sam Howell went from dynamite quarterback prospect to borderline round one prospect, which is hard to do if you're an NFL quality quarterback. Uh, but he lost, you know, Deami Brown. He lost Daz Newsom, who stinks. He lost the two running backs, but the passing game suffered because of a guy like Deami Brown not being able to stretch the field for Sam Howell. So I still believe in Deami Brown as a player. I, I still think he could be the wide receiver too there opposite Terry McLaurin and he's a guy that you want to give up a lot to get because he was going at the end of the second early third round of rookie drafts last year. Last player up on this list is the tight end Mr. Hunter Long of the Miami Dolphins. Now I wasn't necessarily someone who was too excited about him going into it but there's a lot of smart people in this industry that had a very 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 clear take that they really liked Hunter Long. He was like their third or fourth ranked tight end in this class behind Kyle Pitts, behind Pat Fryermuth. Hunter Long is a relatively athletic player as you can see his best comp was Jason Witten, 6'5", 254 pounds, out of Boston College, just 22 years old but third round pick so he's got the draft capital. The bigger thing here is well one he, he missed basically the entire year because he suffered a knee injury in August. He could have returned by the end of the season. He might have actually got on the field at the end of the season so he'll be fine for 2022 the bigger thing here is Mike Kosicki is not under contract with Miami this offseason they have not talked about an extension I haven't heard a single rumor about it so there's a very good chance that Mike Kosicki ends up leaving Miami and if that is the case this opens up the entire tight end spot to be taken by a guy like Hunter Long who is a pass catcher who is an athletic player who can stretch the ball a little bit in the seams okay Will Fuller not going to be back in Miami you know obviously Jalen Waddell is the possession guy in Miami at this point but they're there definitely is a lot of room for a guy like Hunter. They don't have a running back there to catch passes, really. So there's a lot of room for a guy like Hunter Long, who coming off of a year where he was probably on people's taxi squads the entire year, you could flip an end of the third, probably more so a fourth round pick for a guy like Hunter Long if Mike Kosicki ends up leaving. I, I would probably roll the dice and use, you know, one of your rookie picks on the uh, on the argument that Mike Kosicki's probably leaving and take the gamble to get him at a, at a more value. Because as soon as Mike Kosicki departs, if he does, then people are going to know about Hunter Long and be like, oh, he's the starting tight end in Miami. His value skyrockets up. So I'd take the gamble a little bit earlier before any contract negotiations or any rumors about Mike Kosicki kind of pop up there. Played in five games, two targets, one catch, eight yards. So didn't play at all. Obvious situation as to why. Because Kosicki and the injury. So Hunter Long, bing, bang, boom, number five on this list. Before I get to the last player on this list, let me know who you're buying. Terrible rookie seasons, still buying into their sophomore year. Drop it down below for Dynasty. Fuck, I'll send out some personal trade offers to whoever you guys, whoever has the most thumbs up button, you put a player down below. If it gets the most thumbs up, up votes or whatever they fucking call it on YouTube, that's Reddit. I will send out some personal trade offers and I'll follow it up in the next video doing so. Last one on this list, and I'm not getting in depth. This is just, again, over time, extra credit. Brevin Jordan of the Houston Texans. He started to, to pop off a little bit down the end of the year, so he's not that much of a surprise pick. He was an athletic guy coming out of Miami. Disappointing combine, so people forgot about him. Then he lands in Houston, so he's, he had to have forgotten about him. But Jordan Aikens, free agent. I know it doesn't matter, but he's one of those annoying guys in Houston that gets recycled into the starting lineup and he'll randomly go for like 60 yards and a touchdown. People will put him on their waiver wire fucking articles and he'll stink the next week. But Brevin Jordan is an athletic guy that I think could be a very, very big staple of the Houston Texans offense. So Brevin Jordan's the second tight end I would be buying despite a dis I wouldn't even say it was really a disappointing rookie year, you know, relative to the vision that we had for him going into the year. So that's the video for today. We have Zach Wilson, 
Trey Sermon, Terrace Marshall, Deami Brown, Hunter Long, five terrible rookie seasons that I'd still be buying as sophomores in Dynasty. I love you guys. Subscribe to the channel if you love me. Hit the thumbs up if you love me. Go hit underdog one yard. One fucking yard for Joe Burrow. Promo code BDGE when you sign up to get a 100% deposit match bonus. Okay, I'm out of here. Mwah.